G'day everybody. Well, on to part two of the uh, four-cylinder Bitsa semi-hermetic compressor conversion. Uh, I've just finished welding up the cut in the crankcase, uh, or more motor casing actually. Um, as you remember in the previous video, I did have to split that in order to get the stator out, given how tightly it was actually pressed in. Um, just heating it on its own wasn't enough. Um, but uh, just using some general purpose mild steel electrodes, I'm actually really happy with the result from this. It's welded up really nicely. Of course, that's not the finished product. I've got to uh, grind it down, especially this end here, so I can get a uh, bit of a seal. But, um, um, yeah, just using the arc welder, I've actually done a uh, pretty good job on that. So, of course, I'm going to be repainting it, as I said. Um, let's get rid of all that burnt paint from where I was heating it up. And um, before I do go uh, machining that at all, I've got to clean out the inside here. I'm gonna get it outside and give it a good um, hosing down and some deep greaser in there, get all that muck out. And then uh, once I've done that, and clean that up and then uh, start to put the pump assembly back together, put the pistons back in the crankshaft and then start looking at uh, modifying the drive end so let's get into it. Alrighty, while the uh, block's drying outside, I uh, figured we'd have a quick squiz at the cylinder heads and the unloaders. This is the first one, I haven't yet cleaned this one up. But, uh, you can see there's your suction valves here for each cylinder. That's one, that's another. And there's your discharge reed valves there. So that's your, uh, your low side, that's your high side. And there's a uh, gasket on there separating the two. It's one of those plastic coated steel type. They are magnetic when you put a, um, they do attract to a magnet. Uh, these ones aren't. I do have to try to preserve these because I don't actually um, have another uh, another gasket kit for one of these. So I've just got to try to uh, work with the ones I've got. Just hope they hold. Put plenty of grease on them if I have to. That's just your, uh, your cast iron cylinder head. And your uh, bolts hold that on. This does have the casting in it for a um, unloader, except it hasn't been drilled out and fitted with a uh, piston. The other one does, which I'll show you in a minute. You can see that uh, little thread there, that's for a um, little capillary hose going to a pressure switch or a uh, solenoid valve or something, whatever the uh, system requires. So I'll clean that one up in a second. This one I've already cleaned up and got it ready for uh, fitting it back on and then painting. It's actually come up pretty well. Again, same deal. Here's your uh, suction reed valves. And then your discharge reed valves on the top there. You've got little uh, baffles on them to stop them flapping up too high and getting caught on the uh, casting. Since it is sort of rough in there. And again, gasket, that one's really good. So I'm going to use that one again. But, uh, here's your unloading piston on this one. I don't ever believe it was used on this compressor when it was in service, but uh, ooh, yeah, I could be wrong, it might have been. They just put the uh, flange over it just when they replaced it, but um, it was just covered up with that when I, uh, when I got it. Basically what, uh, what goes on here is to stay uh, a flange with a solenoid attached, and then a hose going to your uh, high pressure side and all this little piston does is it gets pushed in by the solenoid valve and that helps bleed the high side pressure back to the low side to allow the uh, compressor to be able to get the pistons moving during startup stop it uh, locking its rotor and then uh, overheating so if you have, say, 250 psi of uh, pressure in your discharge, in your condenser side of your system, that pressure is also going to be sitting against the pistons. And the motor in the compressor is not going to have enough power to be able to get all those pistons moving and up to speed with that pressure acting against them. So what they do is they put this little piston in, and like I said, that bleeds the pressure back to the low side and equalizes it. 
so that way, and it holds it equal, it just continues to let the pressure blow back until the compressor gets itself up to its operating speed. And then the timer, uh, or pressure switch, or whatever times out, and shuts it off. And then the compressor can start building up its head pressure. So it's fairly straightforward in operation. I hope somebody learnt something off that. Do correct me if uh, you don't uh, think I've explained that right. Please do. I'm always open to um, constructive criticism. But, uh, that's an unloader. That just goes on like that. And then that sits on. So that one's all ready to go, more or less. Might be able to clean the rest of that up. That's all just stained. A bit burnt too, because this thing must run pretty hot. So uh, we'll get the other one ready, and uh, we'll probably start putting it back together. Alrighty, so we have the block all cleaned up, ready to go. I've gone over it with a bit of um, kerosene and emery cloth, just some really fine stuff. This is uh, 1,200 particles per square inch. And, uh, you don't want to hit it too hard, because uh, this stuff is abrasive, and you will wear it down if you um, use the, the coarser stuff. But uh, this... Uh, Oops, fine stuff works really good on uh, sensitive material like this. Just knocks all the surface rust off and just brings back that uh, shine. Because it did have a little bit of um, oxide starting to build up on it just from sitting from where I uh, washed it out yesterday. But it's um, it's alright, it's come up really well. So next step is we can get, uh, get some oil in there and just coat all of these uh, exposed surfaces, stop them rusting. And then we can uh, put the crankshaft and the pistons back in and also put the heads on and then uh, get it ready to paint. And there we have it. We've got our pistons and our crankshaft back in. It is a little bit of uh, fiddling around to get these in. You first got to put all your pistons back in in the same order that they came out and also the same orientation too. Um, and then just manoeuvre your uh, crankshaft through the the big ends and it uh, they go in pretty easily so uh, despite that worn bearing like it is rubbing a little bit on it but it actually turns over really smoothly it's not very much uh, like there's a bit of play in it but um, once I get that end housing on plus an external bearing back here there shouldn't be any uh, movement on that at all hopefully it'll be uh, I'll just be able to bypass that completely but all the same, it's uh, coming together slowly, which is good. So um, I'm going to put the heads on next. Just make sure the valves seat properly. And then I've uh, got to put that oil splasher back on. And then we can put that end plate on with its gasket. I did manage to find the uh, gaskets for this too. I think they're two... Um, I don't know if they're rear end gaskets or something or not. I don't think it matters too much, but we've got some more in that cardboard there. Plus that's another uh, separator for the uh, the head and the valve plate. So I'll sort all those out and we'll uh, get them all together. Okay, got it all back together. All ready for painting. I'm going to uh, take it outside, give it a spray over. I'm going to cover this end up. But uh, it turns over really nicely now that I've got that end on. So uh, I'm going to hit it with some uh, methylated spirits just to get rid of all of the uh, the oil and crap, just a little bit of oil on it. And then um, give it an undercoat with some uh, zinc gel and then go over it with, with a nice uh, silver finish. So it should come up quite nicely 